Two of the gas giants can be seen from space, and all four of them are gargantuan balls of rapidly spinning atmospheres of gas around small, rocky cores. The ancients recorded them and believed they represented their gods. As of today, we know some of their moons may harbor conditions favorable to life as we know it. The gas giants are a lot more than blobby balls of color in the night sky. So in this video, let's take a dive into the world of these cosmic behemoths to find out how they formed, and what they look like from the inside. Our solar system is home to four enormous gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, in order of distance from our star, the Sun. They hang in the space between the asteroid belt and beyond the four rocky planets of which our Earth is one. Each gas giant consists almost entirely of gases, mostly light ones like hydrogen and helium, and compared to their huge sizes, they have relatively tiny rock cores. Their differing chemical compositions give rise to their distinct colors, atmospheres, and behavior. And because we're almost certain that the gas giants have small rocky cores, many astronomers believe that the gas giants originated as little solid planets during the formation of our solar system, but quickly pulled huge volumes of hydrogen and helium away from the accretion disk of myriad gases surrounding our fledging sun. Once the sun had stabilized, it blew most of the remaining gases away, leaving us with the gas giants similar to how they appear today. While Jupiter and Saturn hold enormous volumes of hydrogen and helium in their gravity, Neptune and Uranus contain greater volumes of much heavier, more volatile gases. These are often called ices, and the discovery has led to Uranus and Neptune assuming their own categorization, the ice giants. Meanwhile, in Saturn's and Jupiter's atmospheres, heavy gases only account for up to 15% of their composition. Generally, Jupiter and Saturn look more violent and active from the outside. The characteristic clouds you see in Jupiter's and Saturn's atmospheres are caused by stripped and warped distributions of compounds like water and ammonia, and the rest of their atmospheres is hydrogen and helium. Because of the intense pressure in the gas giants, hydrogen is compressed so much that it becomes an electrical conductor. This has given it the name metallic hydrogen because of its conductive behavior. But do not be fooled because there is nothing metallic about hydrogen. The closest gas giant to Earth is Jupiter. Jupiter, being the largest planet in our solar system, can be seen with the naked eye if you know where to look. As the fourth brightest object in the solar system after the Sun, our Moon and Venus, Jupiter was first recorded by the ancient Babylonians, one of the first human civilizations on Earth. The ancient Greeks believed that the planet represented their god Zeus, and the Germanic tribes thought it was their god Thor. With a radius 11 times the Earth, Jupiter is composed of mostly hydrogen and helium with a possible inner core probably the size of our home planet. Jupiter's clouds are full of ammonia crystals and sulfur, as well as probable traces of other compounds. Inside it has a liquid and a solid metal core, where the density is so high that the hydrogen becomes electrically conductive. The temperature in Jupiter's atmosphere fluctuates around negative 145 degrees Celsius, with the center of the planet reaching possibly as high as 24,000 degrees Celsius, hotter than the surface of the Sun, and wind speeds frequently reaching as high as 400 miles per hour, twice the speed of the very strongest hurricanes on our home planet. Jupiter's Great Red Spot Storm has been raging for a staggering 186 years, and possibly as much as three centuries, and rotates at voracious speeds anti-clockwise, making a full rotation every six Earth days. 
Its bright red color is probably caused by organic red compounds. But scientists do not know for sure which chemicals make it look this way. Jupiter is an extremely violent world and cannot support life, but its moons may have liquid oceans with favorable conditions for extraterrestrial life. Jupiter is pursued by a whopping 53 moons, with about 20 more awaiting confirmation. The largest of Jupiter's moons are Ganymede, Callisto, Io, and Europa. Many believe Europa has good conditions for life as we know it. Though they are not nearly as visible as Saturn's, Jupiter does have its own set of rings. They are immensely hard to spot, so much so that they were only confirmed when the Voyager spacecraft flew by Jupiter in 1979. Jupiter has been frequented by a total of nine spacecraft, with the latest, Juno, having reached the gas giant in 2016. Because Jupiter is so large and has such a strong gravitational pull, spacecraft often perform special maneuvers to slingshot around Jupiter and away from our solar system to explore outer space. Jupiter's day is noticeably short at just 10 Earth hours though its year is equivalent to 12 Earth years. Venture beyond Jupiter, and you are bound to arrive at Saturn, a popular planet among many for its distinct rings. Named after the ancient Roman god of wealth and agriculture, Saturn can be seen by the naked eye from Earth, and is an enormous giant nine times wider than our home planet. In fact, it is the furthest away planet that can be observed with the naked eye. Most of Saturn's atmosphere is hydrogen and helium, though the top layers consist heavily of ammonia ice, with wide bands of water ice and sulfur ice mixtures below. Near Saturn's core, the pressure is so high that the hydrogen becomes electrically conductive, or as it is known, metallic. In the core of Saturn, the enormous pressure solidifies metals like iron and nickel as well as rocky materials at huge densities. Winds and the ringed planet's atmosphere can reach a speedy 900 miles per hour. And Saturn has seasons extremely like Earth's because its tilt is almost exactly the same. In 2017, the Cassini spacecraft ended a roller coaster ride of more than a dozen years studying Saturn to learn about its gravity and magnetic fields as well as examining its distinct rings. Arguably the most distinguishing feature of Saturn is its bright rings, which were first discovered by Galileo Galilei, and are the most extensive and widest rings of all the planets. There are seven groups of rings, and they consist of a plethora of objects from the size of grains of sand to entire mountains. The ringed planet has by far the most prominent rings of all the gas giants, and they can even be seen with the naked eye. At the end of the mission, Cassini dived straight into Saturn's atmosphere to learn about its composition. In total, four spacecraft have visited the ringed planet. It is not just orbiters that circle Saturn though. Saturn is greedy with its moons, which number at least 53 with about 30 awaiting confirmation. They are home to some of the most spectacular scenery in our solar system. The largest of its moons are Titan and Rhea, both extraordinary worlds that have attracted a lot of attention by astrophysicists and space agencies. Enceladus is believed to have a liquid ocean somewhere beneath its frozen surface. One day on Saturn lasts less than 10 Earth hours meaning it has the shortest day of all the planets in our solar system. But its year is still significantly longer than ours, lasting about 29.4 Earth years. Uranus gets its name after the Greek god of the sky. Invisible to the naked eye when on Earth, Uranus was discovered by Sir William Herschel in 1781 from his garden, and he shrugged it off, assuming it was just a comet. He was wrong. Uranus has a similar chemical composition to our icy giant partner Neptune, with a mass around 14 times that of Earth. 
8% of Uranus is constructed from an extremely hot and dense fluid. Like Neptune, this fluid is referred to as icy, even though it is far from cold, and temperatures consistently reach over 4,000 degrees Celsius near the core's surface. Uranus's core is comprised of an amalgam of extremely solid, compressed ice and rock. Fly up to Uranus's atmosphere, however, and the temperature can plunge as low as negative 200 degrees Celsius. Methane in Neptune's atmosphere absorbs the red wavelengths of visible light, giving it its blue color. Unlike Neptune, Uranus has comparatively calm wind speeds, with maximum wind streams reaching about 360 miles per hour, still substantially faster than the fastest hurricanes on Earth. But you will see, this is not much in comparison to Neptune's winds. The Voyager 2 spacecraft, which also flew by and inspected Neptune, looked at Uranus to gather scientific data. Uranus appeared very bland and inactive. Although it has a somewhat similar color and composition to its partner Neptune, it does not exhibit the same storms and atmospheric behavior. A day on Uranus lasts 17 hours. Its year lasts a lengthy 84 Earth years. That means Earth makes 84 full orbits around the Sun in the time it takes Uranus to make a single complete orbit. Uranus's axis of rotation is tilted so far that it nearly intersects its plane of orbit. So it is essentially spinning on its side, though that term is sort of meaningless when we're talking about space, where there is no up or down. This does not mean that the tilt doesn't have consequences for Uranus though. Because Uranus's rotational axis is almost parallel to its plane of orbit, it experiences vicious, literally polarized, pun unintended, seasons, where one pole of the planet leans directly towards the sun and is heated far more than the other half of the planet, which has its back towards the sun and is far colder. Therefore, Uranus essentially has two long evil seasons, each pole experiences 42 straight years of endless sunlight before 42 years of cold darkness. For some strange reason, however, the equator of Uranus is substantially hotter than the poles, which goes against common sense. The exact reasons for this temperature distribution are yet unknown. After cruising by Uranus, the Voyager 2 craft flew by Neptune in 1989 becoming the first and only spacecraft to visit the watery planet. Named after the ancient Roman god of the sea, Neptune has clearly earned its name, as its gaseous body is extremely violent and prone to storms, a notable trait of the Roman god. Although it cannot be seen by the naked eye, Neptune exhibits a very bright bluish-green color due to some unknown chemical in its atmosphere. Resembling Uranus's structure, Neptune homes large volumes of liquid water and ammonia in the lower layers of its atmosphere, giving it the nickname, the watery planet. Neptune's inner sea beneath its thick atmosphere is called the Water Ammonia Ocean and is electrically very conductive. Life here is deadly. It is thought that the pressure in Neptune's atmosphere is so strong that methane is decomposed into tiny diamond fragments which are continuously flung towards the ocean. The temperatures can reach as high as 5,000 degrees Celsius, and the lower fluid is immensely hot and dense, even though it is often referred to as icy. Theories regarding the formation and behavior of the gas giants suggest that Neptune's core is composed of iron, nickel, and a variety of silicates. It is estimated that the core weighs a little more than Earth. At the core surface, the atmospheric pressure is a hundred thousand times stronger than Earth's atmosphere. Ferocious winds rip through the gas at nine times the power of the strongest winds on Earth. Neptune is like Jupiter in that it suffers enormous brutal storms throughout its year. When Voyager 2 passed Neptune in 1989, it detected a powerful storm so large, it could have fit the entire planet Earth inside with space to spare. 
Voyager 2 also confirmed Neptune's faint rings, which had been inconclusive for many years previously. It found that Neptune has a series of five large rings and at least four smaller arcs. A Neptunian day lasts 16 hours, but its year is extremely long. 165 Earth years, in fact. Though its magnetic poles are supposed to complete a full rotation every 16 hours, the equatorial zone of Neptune's atmosphere can drag behind, taking up to 18 hours. Because Neptune is angled in relation to its orbital plane at 28 degrees like Earth, it has its own seasons. But because Neptune's year is so extraordinarily long, each season lasts a staggering 40 years. About every 250 years, Pluto's orbit crosses Neptune's, bringing it closer to the Sun than Neptune for about 20 years. <laughs>